today I thought I would start vlogging because we're having something very exciting done, something I have been waiting for for a very long time. We're getting our log burner installed. Today, this morning, bright and early, the scaffolders came and they put up the scaffolding. So tomorrow we're actually getting the tiles laid. So I've been busy making the inside of the fireplace look nicer. I did there was I first went in with some white spray paint that was heat proof but I didn't prime it was coming through so what I did was I used some primer and primed I did two coats on top of the brick on top of all the soot and then I went in again with more I had to buy more of the white heat proof spray paint once we heat proof so it's safe for the log burner so yeah tiles tomorrow then next week monday tuesday is actually the install so we have our log burner i have the park ray aspect six i think it's more common to have the five but i wanted something a bit bigger because the fireplace itself is quite a big hole and i really want to heat quite a lot of the house as much as possible because it gets quite cold in the winter we're also having stuff done to the chimney and so are our neighbors so that worked out really well so we're actually going to half the scaffold scaffolding it's a lot more expensive than I realized you can also get log burners installed with a cherry picker so I thought I would document this process and well I haven't actually asked hopefully the company doesn't mind if I film so I was very very lucky that uh, Hunter Stoves have gifted the Parkway Aspect 6 log burner and also Pujala have gifted the flue and some other bits to it but I am actually paying for the install so at some point I will sit down and look through my notes so I had I think four different companies installers come and give a free survey and the people I went for it's because they kind of did everything that I needed so lay the tiles install the log burner and actually do stuff to our chimney so we have a broken pot that needs to be fit so the other three pots were actually gonna get capped so that stops like insects coming down water pigeons our neighbors has actually had two pigeons fall down the chimney and trash the house so that's something we definitely want to stop. The scaffolding from the ground up. And this is the view from the back, so you can see it better that it's wrapped around the chimney. This is the stove that will be going in. This is from Hunter Stoves. It's the Park Ray Aspect 6. I also opted for the black handle. The cats have been sleeping on top and attacking this box. But inside I have bits from Pujala and then upstairs I've got the flu, which I'll actually, now I'm thinking of it, need to get down. Stick these front ones on with high trade products that we use. It says sticks like <laughs> <laughs> So it's good for high temperature and low temperature and wet. Even at 100 degrees? Crazy. Yep. But this in about five minutes will be, will have gone off. This one, you don't want to get anything wrong. You don't want to put too too much on or too less on. To get it out, you've got to disturb the other one. No pressure. No pressure. It's not a messy job at all, really. It's the only bit where you get a bit of dust, but I sheet everything up, is mm -hmm. just getting that flue down. Just that, because that's 100, 150 years of chimney. It'll be down in usually a minute. I build the plate first, drop that down, clean out on top of the plate, take the plate out, make a hole in it, then pull the flue through, put the pipe on, that goes in, connects up. And there's a bird guard, so you never have no problems, but a lot of people have, I've had squirrels, Dan Tuners, Dan, in sitting inside the wood burner. People ring us up to come and get rid of them. And they've broke through the fire, because the fire bricks are, although they're fireproof, they're quite brittle, so if a squirrel goes in the top, it fell down, smashed through it, <gasps> sat in there, and when I come in, the stone was about the same size as that. The squirrel filled the whole inside of it, oh, and I've got some chimney rods up, eight meters of them, and got one of the big furry tops. Got it on top, pushed it right to the top of the squirrel, it sat on top like a lift, got to the top and jumped off. 
trying to get the flue down. There was slight blockage and they had to put up these chimney sweep rods. So the blockage, tie the rope and pull that down and that's how they then get the flue down. Make sure all your windows and doors are closed. Uh, basically, because you can draw the smoke out because the windows obviously closer from the top of the chimney. So yeah. until that drawer is 100% going, windows and doors closed. You can't use newspaper. Ink's corrosive to the flues. Fire lighters, air vent down here, can you see that? Basically it does mm -hmm. that. When it's out, there's like a spinning thing at the back, it's completely open. When it's in, it closes it. Open, needs as much air as it can, just pop that fire lighter on there. Then do a little jingle. You can set all this up first and put one of them long chefs through a hole, sort of in there. Yeah. If you want, that's easier, don't burn your hands. Leave the door ajar. Yeah, that would just sit something like that. Basically, what they're saying is now, once that log's going, you ain't actually got to open the door for 25, 30 minutes, you see. So you established all your drawer. You can leave sort of half an inch of ash on the floor. And when it gets too much, you can just pull that up, this metal thing here, scoop out what you don't want. You've got a little scooper up there in that bag. Ah, little okay. silver one. This is a fancy one, really. You've got, you get a set of gloves. That. Does your window, does in and out for you, can you see? Yeah. When it's cold, put it in a bag, put it in the bin, you're allowed to, ash. But if it's just ash, you can put it in a watering can, mix it up, and mm. it's the best fertiliser for your grass oh, ever. Oh, some roses then. Yeah, oh yeah, it'd be brilliant. So remember where we are, we are fire lighter, ginger, mm -hmm. small log. If you close it too early and it starts to smoke, you're obviously strangling it to open it, but it's mm. going okay. Look, only close the bottom one, the second load of wood's burning, and only then, if it's burning too quick, if it's burning fine, mm. don't touch it. If you can hear it, it's going like there's oh, wind, yeah, yeah. that's too much, and you just gently tap that in. Never go further than halfway. It goes there. Never go further than there because the other thing that does is you see that metal there yeah. that draws air in down the front of the metal, throws it down the glass, keeps the glass clean. It's called an air wash system, they all have it. But if you close that more than halfway, your door will start dirtying up. As soon as you think it's established, close the door. When people come round and you want to glow, you can put three or four bits of wood on, <laughs> so there's lovely flames. But the yeah. way to use it, the best way to use it is burn one log three quarters of the way down and then put another one on. That's the most efficient because it's not the flame that heats the room, it's, it's a fire filled radiator, the steel gets up to heat, which radiates into the room. It takes a lot of energy to get the wood burn up hot, but then if you just put one bit, it's just like boiling water, you know, when you put it onto simmer, it still boils. When you're changing your logs, literally, you can imagine, I won't put one on, but imagine you've got a bit of wood in your hand. Mm -hmm. When you put a new bit of wood on, you open the wood burner for an inch, count to 10, that lets the air pressure inside and outside equalise, that stops smoke going into the room. Slowly open it, ain't ready yet, but, and then you, look, you can put a bit of wood in, you can put your hand in, see, look at that. Do you always have to be in the room? No, as long as the door's closed, you're safe, you can go out, go to bed, do what you want, but as long as the door's closed. You see the cream fire bricks in the back and side? Mm -hmm. They start to go black, when it reaches temperature, they self-clean, all the soot drops off. That's not actually glass, they're clear ceramic tiles. You're supposed to get split once a year, yeah, for the insurance and stuff, so. Chester is loving this. He's sitting right up to it and he keeps watching through the screen. It's a fire. The kettle's hot. So happy with how this looks. I need to get some baskets so I can store those either side. Next thing I need to do actually as well, they gave us a carbon monoxide detector and they said the best place to put it is the height of our picture rail. It has to be against these walls. So before they used to put them along the sides, we could hide them, but it has to be either against this wall or this wall. So I'll probably put it up in that corner there. But whilst the weather is good, I'm thinking of going up on the scaffolding and having a look. Also, I haven't even looked outside to see we've got the new cows on the pots, so that will stop water coming down, birds, insects. Uh, have a look at what they've done for us. Have a look at the state of our neighbour's side. Apparently it's quite bad, so they're getting repointing done. And stay tuned because later in the video I'll go through quotes I've had from previous companies and total costings in case that is helpful for you guys. Pulls back. He's holding blue like a baby. Oh my god, blue's face. <laughs> you look terrified, mate. Yeah. You're such a chill boy. Look at the little spotted belly. Show us your belly. Woo. 
Yeah, you're very. So what are you going to do for us now, Paul? Uh, I'm going to put your carbon monoxide thing on the wall. So we don't want to put screws on the wall, so we're going to use Velcro. This is how we put up our fire alarm. I used to make sure it doesn't fall off the wall. <laughs> yeah. And then we need to pull this tab out to activate the battery. Done. Right in the corner. Above or below it? Above. Yeah. Need to hold and press the test sound button. This one? I don't know, I can't read. <laughs> Ow. Okay, yeah. It works. Yay. Here is a new addition. I got this fan off Amazon and it came with a free thermometer. So this is good. This will show you the best heat that it's operating. So if it's too cold, too hot or the perfect temperature. I'm about to light this. Um, but once this gets to heat, then this will automatically start turning and it will blow the heat into the room. So instead, when the log burner heats up, the heat more rises to the ceiling. We do have high ceilings. So this will just push the heat into the room and keep us warmer quicker. I'm gonna give our natural fire lighters a go. So what this is, is just orange peel. I'm gonna peel this in a second and then you just pop the peel on top of the burner and let it dry out. I'm gonna see if this is good as they say. So the people that installed the log burner said, this is a great natural chemical free alternative. So you just set fire to this as you would a fire lighter and then put it under the kindling and then off your fire goes. And now the stove has come up to temperature, the fan is spinning and I've got some more orange peel. I'm finding this thermometer thing really, really helpful. So I'm making sure I'm keeping it in this white zone, which is at its optimal temperature. On camera, this looks like it's going a lot slower. That is spinning really fast. I definitely feel both these together, so I know the temperature and this pushing the heat forward. It's made such a difference. The room is at 23.5 degrees. Never has a house been that hot before. It is amazing. I think I've eaten all my lipstick off, so excuse that. So next thing we need to do is get a log store and order our wood in bulk. So I've been doing loads of research online. A few people have recommended websites like Logs, Logs, Logs. I've heard of Certainly Wood as well. But then I've looked at more local places. I'll link below the ones in Norfolk if they are relevant if you are local to Norfolk. Otherwise, I guess research your own places. Hardwood, the proper dried out wood, one cubic meter, 90 pounds, which is amazing. So you need to buy or make a log store, choose how I'm gonna order it from. And since we've had our chimney pots capped, because it's very windy outside, it's Storm Dennis is happening at the moment. And usually the wind would just whistle through the house. It made such a difference. The house does feel warmer and it, you can hear the difference as well, you can't hear the wind. On to pricing, I'll put on the screen the screen grab of my notes when I had people coming round to give me quotes. I had four companies come round. So the people I went with was Anglia Wood Burner Centre. I paid in total, they added that up wrong. It was around 1,600 and something. This is all with VAT. Scaffolding was 450 and thankfully got to split with our neighbours because they had some work done too. The actual install of the stove was 740 pounds. They were gonna supply more hammer tiles which I had some originally in the fireplace. They were going to supply 12 and install for £195. I ended up having my own tile and I did question why it was still the same price but then they did explain that it was more work. I'm so glad I watched because I had so much respect for how much prep he did and lining it up and doing all that before he installed it. It was a full day. I was more than happy to still pay the same price. Chimney work plus registration plate. We have the chimney pot replaced where the pots were into the top of the chimney stack, made good again because that was a little bit cracked. Capped off and with like the cowls and everything. I did have the flue and parts, I'm not really sure what parts now, but um, the flue, the pipe connecting the flue to the stove, that is all Pujola. So things will depend on like the price of a stove to the total amount. Also, if you found your stove not all companies will install it some companies will only install stoves that they supply just so they know where it's come from that it is brand new and if they have any problems they can sort it out with the supplier 
first company that came around, they were going to install with a cherry picker. The cherry picker is £300, including VAT. If we weren't having the work done to our chimney, then a cherry picker could have been possible. Their stove installation cost was £1,044.99, so that does vary. Like, all these prices do quite vary, actually. They could supply and replace a chimney pot for £144. So their total was £1,489. The third company, they would install with a larger cherry picker but that was the same price, £300, including VAT. So the installation cost was £600, so that was the cheapest. And for them to do the half was £170.40. I don't think they could do all the other work I wanted to do. And the last company, he said that he could install it off a ladder. We have slate tiles on our roof. Um, and he was like, it's fine, I'm also a roofer, so if I break it, I'll fix it. He didn't really have a breakdown of everything, but he would charge £300 to £250 for the half. His total was £1,200. So that will obviously vary whereabouts you are in the country and what you need to have done. So if you have something that needs to be ripped out, if you need extra building work, that'll obviously be extra. So we were lucky we had a very big open fireplace that didn't need any work other than a half installed. But I hope you found this video helpful. I'll link down below to the stove and who I used and the wood places I've been looking at. If you have any questions, leave those down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.